Okay, uh, we have talked about the uh, encryption machinery in terms of the rotor devices. Um, and now uh, we come up to mm, around 1970 time frame. Uh, and um, IBM and a fellow by the name of Horst Feistel. And he um, invented a cipher called Lucifer, um, which gave rise to a whole family of ciphers, um, which do both substitution and permutation in multiple rounds at the bit level. So now we, we are looking at computers, we are looking at programs um, doing uh, encryption and decryption by uh, a computer program uh, software. Um, and we're doing it at the bit level, so um, we are no longer constrained by uh, just encrypting text. Um, you know, now we can encrypt basically anything. And um, pretty much all symmetric ciphers uh, are um, basically variations on the Feistel ciphers. Uh, now, that's uh, in terms of uh, block encryption. Um, uh, stream uh, ciphers, uh, specific stream ciphers, uh, aren't, but an awful lot of uh, stream ciphering these days uh, is done um, using a block cipher in stream mode anyways. Um, and we'll talk about the different modes later on. Um, but we've got, um, we've got the, uh, everything happening on software um, at the bit level. So we're, you know, uh, exchanging groups of bits in, in terms of permutation, and then we're substituting uh, groups of bits for other groups of bits. And, uh, and having done that, then we go around and do it again and, and multiple rounds. So, you know, getting everything good and scrambled. Um, and it's, you know, hard to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. Uh, now, um, at this point, we start to know mathematically how hard it is and, and we get into the the idea of work factor in terms of the uh, uh, the strength of an algorithm and so um, we start to be able to say uh, how strong uh, algorithms are and we can do mathematical analysis of it in order to uh, ensure that we do know uh, how strong the algorithm is, how much work we are going to have to do in order to break that algorithm uh, or, or that an adversary is going to have to do in order to break that algorithm. And we've, you know, got the, the idea of the cost, making the, um, the cost of cryptanalysis greater than the value of the information to the adversary. Now, we also, at this point, have um, an interesting uh, issue, particularly with um, Lucifer, because it was submitted to the NSA um, for use in, in government encryption. Now, Lucifer itself was not specifically accepted, but the NSA basically took that, that basis, made some modifications to it, and here, of course, comes the conspiracy theories. And the tinfoil hat crowd, you know, for years and years, has said there's a back door that NSA built into the data encryption standard because that's what it became. Uh, the data encryption standard, DES or DES, is the, uh, uh, was um, the standard for data encryption for government, um, was widely used in the military, um, so, yeah, uh, everybody was saying, you know, don't use it because the NSA knows how to break it. Now, the thing is, um, it's an open standard. Um, 
we, you know, uh, it is published. Um, people have looked at it, and and for many many years, uh, people did it. Now, it, it was the the NSA that made the changes, and the NSA has more mathematicians per pound than any organization outside of a university uh, uh, math faculty. So, um, they they know their stuff. And as a matter of fact, I mean, you know, originally, what, this was proposed around 1971, uh, um, and it was, it was accredited until 91. I, I may have the dates uh, a little bit wrong here, so I'm... And, you know, sorry if I if I've missed some jumps, but anyway, so um, ninety one, uh, the NSA looked at it again and said, okay, um, this is still acceptable, but only until um, uh, nineteen ninety seven. And in fact, we are not going to accredit it again after nineteen ninety seven. Um, it was in January of nineteen ninety seven that the accreditation ran out. And it was in June of 1997 that Des was cracked for the first time. And in fact, um, subsequent work has in fact found that yes, there is a weakness in uh, in Des. Um, but I, I think that. Uh, if it's, is it differential in your crypto mass? Sorry, you, you can go and uh, research it if you are terribly interested in it. But anyway, so there is a specific form of cryptanalysis to which Des is somewhat uh, susceptible. The thing is, the changes that the NSA made to it, and they, you know, they strengthened the permutation and weakened the substitution or something like that, actually made it stronger against that particular cryptanalytic attack. And and so, number one, the NSA knows their stuff. You know, they, they were very accurate about how strong this was going to be and how long it was going to take until somebody, you know, somewhere came up with an idea for breaking it. And also, um, no, they didn't put a backdoor in it. They actually made it better. So, um, you know, uh, one in the eye for the tinfoil hat crowd, but also an indication that, yes, we can now start to look at, you know, how strong these things are, how much work uh, is going to have to go into uh, breaking them. Um, and uh, so once again, uh, Kirchhoff's Law comes into play here. When people are... You know, when it's an open protocol, an open algorithm, when people know it, then you've got a whole bunch of groups of people trying to break it. Uh, this is, uh, I, I remember a, a hockey goalie um, who uh, made some comment about how would you like a, a job where every time you make a mistake, a big red light goes on and 15,000 people boo. But um, in... Uh, science, um, every time you do something right, all of your friends try and prove you wrong. And, and you know, this is, this is how we do cryptanalysis. We, you know, try and break the system um, as uh, a, a means of trying to determine whether or not it is, in fact, strong enough for people to use and rely on. So, uh, again, Kirchhoff's Law, don't rely on the secrecy of the algorithm, use published algorithms, we know how strong they are.